We are the Scarlet Guard, and we stand for the freedom and equality of all people, starting with the Reds. We have heard you call us weak, insignificant, and not consider us a threat. You didn't believe that we could bring the fight to your door, and now we have proven ourselves to the King, the Generals, the whole country. You are starting to see us, and we are everywhere. We will continue to rise up. Red as the dawn. I'm Greg Rockefeller. I'm Beth Rockefeller. And I'm Mia Rockefeller. And this is Reading with the Rockefellers, a family book club podcast. Today, we are discussing Red Queen by Victoria Aviard. So grab a copy and join us on this literary journey. Back in my room, I ripped the ruined dress off, letting the silk fall to the floor. The king's words replay in my head, peppered with flashes of this terrible night. Kalorn's eyes stand out through it all, a green fire burning me up. I must protect him, but how? If only I could trade myself for him again, my freedom for his. If only things were that simple anymore. Julian's lessons have never felt so sharp in my mind. The past is so much greater than this future. Julian. Julian. Welcome to Reading with the Rockefellers. This is episode 12, Red Queen, chapters 21 and 22. So, Julian is the vibe I'm getting. Julian. She really wants to go see Julian. Well, I mean, I really want to go see Julian. (laughs) You notice that Mare, I mean, Farley's down there and Walsh, but Mare is... It's Kalorn. It's Kalorn. It's Kalorn. Yeah. It's, I don't care about the people who actually really know things. I care about Kalorn. I don't care about the other people that I've kind of become friends with. Kalorn. Well, it always goes back to Kalorn. It's you know she's that's her that's her her shtick. If and then you will. she's got to protect Kalorn, and Kalorn's like kind of the reason all this started. If you really think about it, kind of. No, I guess Mayor is. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean. Saving him, him, saving him is what this has been correct. all about. Yeah. Yes. It, that kind of led her down this slippery slope. But as he's trying to point out to her multiple times, he's a big boy and he's going to do what he wants to do. You can't tell him what to do. That's true. Yeah, he's he's 18. <laughs> Clearly. Ish. Oh, yeah, because he was conscripted. That's right. Or he was going to be. Or he was going to be. But, well, and then, he, yeah. like, it's not like he ever asked for this. He's told her multiple times, Mayor, I didn't ask you to do this. You're you're just doing this for yourself. You're not actually doing this for me. Right. I think he's also finally realized that he's been friend zoned. <laughs> I mean he's been friend zoned hard. Yeah. yeah. Do you see who she's around all day, every oh, day? Yeah. Right. He doesn't really have a choice chance. Yeah. All the swolitude surrounding her. I could look after you too, Mayor. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. Let's dig into this chapter, shall we? So she does go see Julian because she She's is, got an idea. She's got an idea. She wants yeah. to do something about her prisoners. Her friends who are prisoners. prisoners and also yeah. the girl just can't stay still. Nope, she can't. She's gotta she's gotta be moving around and doing something. Sounds she just like my can't. Grandpa. That is true. Right. <laughs> she and, can't just like sit, you know? Yeah. And she does get down to Julian's room with barely an inconvenience, actually. Yeah. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah. We're going to be saying that a couple times throughout this And episode. Julian <laughs> appears to be on his way to getting liquored up, from what I can gather here. Yeah. He's... Bottle of scotch or whiskey yeah. or something out on the, out on the credenza yeah. and a sipping glass. And he's like, uh, I would think... You know, basically, lessons are canceled now with everything that's going on, right? And it's extremely late. And it's yeah. kind of late, too. Yeah. He tells her that they've already given the shooting a name, mm-hmm. the clever news, the and that it's already been broadcast on there. Yeah. <laughs> Why the were you a snake for a second? <laughs> Which, Your by the way. dad speaks parcel tongue? You didn't know that? <laughs> I do. Sorry. By the way, that's how... I have, like, since it was said in the book, that's how I've always referred to the shooting. Because it's so much easier to say it that way. The sun shooting? Yeah. So that, so that, like, it's known 
what's being talked about, but it's not long. It's it, it is very clever. I will give them that. It's a clever name. I don't know why they didn't call it the shooting ball. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. No, nah, I think the sun shooting is better because of no, the sun. The shooting ball. What does the sun have to do with it? The torn it's the sun. the hall of the sun. And the torn sun is the... Oh, yeah, the Scarlet Guard. Emblem of the Scarlet Guard. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of missed that in the last episode with the it's whole... It's a thing. Uh, harpoon spear yeah. thing through... Yeah, the full Bellicose flag thing. Yeah. with the sash That's on right. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what does Julian tell her? He says he can't do anything. It's, what am I going to do? I don't it's Like, I don't, you know, I'm already an outcast. You know, I can't, I, I can't right. pull any strings. No one's going to listen to me. What power do I have? But she's like, um, you have the power to make people basically do what you want by... Just... Talking to him, talking to him. So it's uh, a little more complicated uh, than that, but yes, it's the basis of it. What do you mean? You don't? You can't do anything. I don't really like Julian's attitude here. I think he's drunk. I mean, he probably is a little drunk. Yeah, because he says uh, something about the four terrorists locked in the cells, and then he's like, "Oh, never mind. I mean, three. And he, and that, makes a comment about Ptolemus. Oh, uh, that hurts a Tristan. little bit. Yeah, I was like, dude. <laughs> because Julian I, is a mean drunk. You see, well, I and don't... His, at his heart also, he's silver. Right. He yeah. may kind of view the red sympathetically, but still. Right. I think... Well, and she, he's not looking at it through the lens that she's about to show him yet. Right. Exactly. And I, the thing is, when you read that, it depends on how like you read it. Like, it depends on how you think he's saying it. Because you can take it as, like, almost, I, like how you were describing it, like, oops, I mean three. Like, kind of sarcastic and, like, his, yeah, excuse condescending. me, condescending a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or how I read it the first time was, like, actually apologetic. I don't know why I was a bright-eyed child. <laughs> I mean, it was, like, six <laughs> months ago. <laughs> but still, you get the point. There's so much you didn't know back then. <laughs> this series has changed me. It'll do that to you. It will. It it will. So then Mayor says, hey, look, eventually they're going to get to the bottom of it and find out who it was. And um, it was me, Julianne. Yeah. I was the one that helped. And uh, I kind of started this all. And Julianne's instant indignation here to me is kind of almost hilarious because I don't buy it for a minute. He immediately goes on the, like, I told you so. Yeah, exactly. He's immediately like, well, I told you not to do this, so it's your fault. Like, yeah, it's my fault, but I still need your help to get me out of this. Yeah, he has probably, like, the most man response <laughs> ever oh, lay it on me. Shall, shall i show you the definition of terrorism mayor like oh let me look it up in the dictionary for you let me mansplain this to you yeah, mayor total mansplaining but he does kind of make a little bit of a point in that the silver's version is all people are going to hear so right. they are going to be terrorists to most people right but she's trying to get him to see that that's not who How they it are. really is. Right. Yeah. He, he, she even says the bomb was unexpected. She wasn't aware that was going to happen. Well, she, and then we get to the point where yeah. she actually tells him why she really wants to help them. And why is that? Bum, bum, bum. She says, this was my plan. I'm one of them. Bum, bum. <laughs> and I imagine in this moment that Julian was taking a drink of whatever it is that he's hammered on and <laughs> spit it out all over the place. Just a giant drunk man spit take. Uh, no, I'm imagining that. Why would you make me do that? If I had to, you have to. Hmm. Right. She doesn't mention that Maven's involved. Yeah. Yeah. Spares that. Yeah. He because doesn't need it'll to know just that. make Julian more mad. He already hates Maven. He's he's already angry, yeah. he's drunk, he doesn't need anything else. Yeah, just let those two have their fight moment. 
And Julian doesn't want to help Mare because he oh, knows gosh. that Alara will find out and she will take his eyes and he'll never yeah. be able to read again. Yeah. And Mare is kind of like flip floppy <laughs> on that. She's like, um, Julian's eyes versus Kalorn free. Mm. He won't be able to read his books, That's but a, Kalorn will be free. She's making like a pros and cons list in her yeah, mind. Yeah, she's that meme where the going back and forth between the two red buttons. Yeah, definitely. And then Mary, of course, being dramatic as she is, she says basically, just let me die. Then. Yeah, if you're not going to help me, then just let me die. Because <laughs> there's no other reason for me to live if these people die. Right. <sighs> I, I, I want to read straight out of the book what it says Julian does and says here when you guys are ready. Yeah, we're, I'm good. Shoot. All right. So she says, basically, just let me die. When he speaks again, he sounds hollow. They called my sister's death a suicide. Slowly, he traces his fingers across his wrist, dwelling on a long-ago memory. That was a lie, and I knew it. She was a sad woman, but she never would have done such a thing. Not when she had Cal and Tybe. She was murdered, and I said nothing. I was afraid, and I let her die in shame. And since that day, I've been working to fix that, waiting in the shadows of this monstrous world, waiting for my time to avenge her. He raises his eyes to me. They sparkle with tears. I suppose this will be a good place to start. Thusly, Julian is convinced. That didn't take very long. Very yeah. little inconvenience. I liked you guys' note on the outline in that. Didn't take long to convince Julian. Yeah. Like He's like, they're yeah. terrorists. Super Mayor's easy. a terrorist, too. But, yeah, I'll help. All right, but, I'm in. But my sister, though... Maybe yeah, she's I mean, lucky I he was drinking. That's maybe. <laughs> I imagine Corian's probably always in the back of his mind. There's, yeah. there's also yes, and I think there's something that he says later that we'll get to, and I will cover that kind of informs this why Mare is able to kind of swing him over. So, and then why he discusses his sister specifically in this situation. Yeah, yeah. I feel so. like. Anytime he shares some, like, connection with Mare, it's almost always about her, about Corianne. Right. I think he sees a lot of Corianne and Mare, for sure. Yeah. And it's like, it's one thing that they have in common. They've both lost a sibling now. So they can kind of share in that sadness and trauma. Yeah. And she... She says all she needs is a magnetron and some blind cameras. And luckily, she can provide both. She's I'm a girl so with cool. a plan. So how how do they pull this off? How do they pull this ingenious escape off? Or do they? Okay. Oh, they do. Oh. Keith Morrison. They do. Oh. So she summons Lucas. And she's basically like, I'm hungry. I didn't get any food at the dinner because people died. And I don't want servants running around the halls because Alara is out for blood yeah. with the servants. With all this guard business, it's not safe. Yeah. So why don't you just escort me down to the kitchen and I'll get something to eat and maybe I'll give you a cookie. <laughs> and like, Lucas, a, like a toddler? Yeah. Like a dog? <gasps> Lucas, want a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> and Lucas is like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't don't want to take you to stupid dinner. <laughs> but he does. He does. He does. And so as she walks down the hall with him, she's turning off the cameras with her ability, which is something that she can do now. Yeah. And they run into Julian. <gasps> what? <gasps> what? And Julian. Puts his hands on Lucas's face and basically is like, you're not going to remember any of this. Oh. You're going to take us take us down to the cells, use the service halls, uh, and don't tell anybody and don't remember any of this. So basically, Julian is a human roofie. <laughs> I mean, you're not not wrong. That's, I mean, if you think about the abilities that they have, and you think about what could be done with them and what we know some of Silver's do with them, it's scary. 
Yeah. To yeah. think about. Yeah. That, that, Very. That Julian situation is a little creepy. It's like, I feel like you just like abducted this man. I mean, kind of. And as they're going through the hallway, she's turning off the cameras and he's singing to the guards and erasing their memories yeah. as they move through the hallways. Okay, I have one thing I want to touch on that I immediately thought when this plan was when this plan was happening. Are they not going to suspect blackouts in the cameras, not lights, just cameras and blank spots in guards' memories? Are they not going to be like, "Wait, that's a little suspicious." And then the prisoners are suddenly missing and no one remembers how it happened and the cameras didn't catch it. I mean, that's exactly what happens later on in the chapter, but we'll get there. Right. It's just like, that's just what's Im what immediately came to my mind is like, how do they think that they're going to get away with this and there's not going to be any suspicion? Yeah. I, I don't really? think she is thinking at this All point right, in time. Not. She's just hoping that they, everybody's going to be so busy with what's going on that nobody will put two and two together and notice the missing memories. Because it's and the proven. missing video camera footage. I, Cal is bad at math. I mean, that is also true. We don't get math in this chapter. We just find out that 12 people total died. So there was the original 10 they told us about, the 11 that we added up, and then they just threw one more in for good ma measure. No, I think, I think that was Mare mentally counting Tristan. It was the 11 that Cal was talking about. Because she actually did the math. And Cal, <laughs> said, math. Cal said the three in the shooting and the 74 in the bombing, so 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't, oh. think it's, I don't think it's Mare that says the 12, though. Maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong. We'll, 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 get we'll look at it later. No, somebody yeah, says no 12. Yeah, no math in this chapter. Maven. Somebody, it's yeah. Maven later says 12 okay. dead. I was going to say somebody says Someone 12, does. but I couldn't remember yes. if it was Mare. Someone does. But yeah, it's it it says it eventually. So how how does that total get counted? I I think it's I think it's okay. We'll, we'll get there. Okay, let's 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 move right, on we, with the escape. We, yeah, we got to get to the great escape before we can get to all this other great information later. In the right, <laughs> this absolute cluster of a plan that they have. Yes, Mayor feels right at home sneaking around and lying. She's yeah, like, is, yeah, this is my this is my jam. This is my forte. I know all about this. I'm gonna do this all day. She's the Captain America of sneaking around and lying. I could do this all day. And the Sentinels are like, you can't come down here. And she's like, I'm Lady Marina Titanos. I can do whatever I, I want. Do whatever I want. And the Sentinels are like, okay, you can have five minutes. Okay. She's like, we can work with five minutes. You're on the clock. Yeah, five minutes. She kind of yeah. sweet talks him a little. She's like, "Having the I'm going to be a princess soon, and having a favor with a princess could be very appealing." And they're like, "Okay, five minutes." Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how Julian couldn't just be like, "You're going to let her talk to them," but no, because there were the multiple, I think you can't do more than one at a time because yeah. it comes up later too. Oh, that's right. There it's were all multiple, of them. Yeah. and he couldn't handle them all at once. And if he did it to one, then he would. They would like figure they it would out. They would figure it out, yeah. It wouldn't, it, no point bueno. But before she opens the cell or has. Right. Julian have Lucas open the cell, she wants a question answered. Yeah. She wants to know what's up with that bomb. Yeah. That, what, what was that? So, Farley says that she didn't know anything about that. She didn't authorize it. That, that like, that she, Mare should know that that's not. She's, what they do. She's actually pretty upset and mad at Mare for yeah. even asking that, like yeah. she would do she's that. Like, how dare you? Because Mare even's like, well, what about Archeon? She's like, yeah, no one got killed there. Right. Yeah. Sure Those buildings, buildings were empty. empty. We, we don't kill unless we, we have a, a purpose. purpose. Yeah. Specific targets have been picked out. Why would we, you know, sh uh, detonate a bomb and risk more collateral damage when we had already shot at the four targets that we yeah. want, basically. Right. But it's kind of it's Kalorn that wins her over because what does he say to her? Do you really think we'd blow up our greatest hope? <laughs> so not only does he not only is he like telling the truth, he's like affirming what Farley was saying, but he's also flattering her. He's also flattering Mare. And she blushes a little. Yeah. Just a little. With Mare Barrow? 
flattery will get you absolutely everywhere. Because she has absolutely no self confidence. Right. So she eats she up gets it every from scrap else. Yes, yeah. that she can take, pretty much. So she's like, all right, fine. She's happy with that answer about the bomb. And she has Julian tell Lucas to open the bars mm-hmm. and let the prisoners out. And Farley's arm is still all yeah. jacked up. Yeah. Farley's like... arm is still hanging out of its socket. Her shoulder is still dislocated. Yeah. Which can't be fun. Then they decide that it's time to deal with the Sentinels. Yay! So, Mare's plan is to call the first Sentinel down, have them come down, have Julian, like, basically whisper to them to tell the next person to come down, and for them then to go to sleep and forget about what they saw. So, it works the first time. The So, they get the first... Per- the uh, first mm-hmm. sentinel down there, they put him to sleep after he calls for the second one. The second one comes down. He calls for the third one and goes to sleep. But before the third one can come down, two of them come down together. Yeah. They're like, hey, are you done yet? Right. Why wanted it? Like, how did they think that they would yeah, just come not, down one at a time like that? They're not like trusting. That? They're yeah. not trusting what's going on here. Like, what, what's going on? You know, so two of them head down at the same time. And this is not good because Mare and Julian cannot handle more than one yeah. at a time. So Julian she sparks can't, up. can't sing to one, more yeah. than one person. Yeah. She sparks up. She's got her hand kind of like held like behind, behind her, her back, back with a yeah giant ball of fire. She says a spark ball or something. Yeah, pretty much lightning ball or whatever she does. Uh, there's a mutter in here. Yeah, so add one to the mutter count. Yeah, one of the sentinels has a gun. Mm-hmm. So he points the gun at her and wants to know what up. What's behind her back? And they kind of have this standoff. Yeah, Mexican standoff for a moment, and then. Uh, Guido shoots first. <laughs> yes. Cezanne shoots, and she electrocutes the railing, shocking him, but she gets shot. Mm-hmm. The other one pulls his gun and shoots, but misses, and she hurls her lightning ball at him and mm-hmm. hits him. Yeah. But then she's shot. Right. Yeah. She she has a bullet wound in like her stomach. Kaloran catches her, keeps her from falling on the floor, and then one of the sentinels happened to be part of a healer family. And so Julian, like, basically wakes them up for a minute, forces them to heal Mare's gunshot and Farley's arm. Yay! And then puts them back to sleep. Yeah. And is basically like, okay, tells the prisoners, you've got, you know, an hour or two until these guys wake up. That's your head start. Now go. And everybody comes by to say goodbye to Mare. And this part almost made me cry. Oh, really? Yeah, it was very sweet. Walsh um, tells Mare that she really wants her to be queen one day somehow. The Red Queen. <gasps> dun, dun, That's dun. the title of That's the book. That's the title of the book. And Kaloran kind of liked that. He said, that's cool. Yeah. It's got a nice ring to it. it then Greg's nice. favorite part of the chapter. <laughs> oh, what? You want to? Smiling Farley? Oh, yeah. yeah. She gives us, what does it say? A big, a t- big toothy smile? Let me see. Read what she says, what Mary says about her there. Basically. Her, her face splits into a rare toothy smile. Despite the scar, I realize she's very pretty. So. <laughs> Natalie Dormer. Yeah. Yeah, there's another sneak peek into our fan casting. <laughs> we get another mutter. There's a lot of muttering. A lot of muttering. There's a lot of flinching later. A lot of later. flinching later. For every flinch we took off in the last chapter, we're adding on like in the next chapter. Like two flinches yeah. in the next chapter. The flinch count is going to go way up. Kalorn says the dumbest thing ever to Mare. <laughs> he says, I really wish I could ask you to come with me, but I know I can't. <laughs> It's like, dude, why would you say that? You exactly. know she wants to go with you and she can't. Why would you say that? No, it's, she actually It's like kind of inadvertently rubbing it in her face. She just punches him in the arm and says, I know, me too, buddy. 
Yeah, he says what I need and what I want are two different things. She's like, thanks, pal. Uh... No, her response is actually, never have I smiled so brightly and still felt so sad. Aww. Drama. (laughs) She loves that drama. She loves that drama. I'm saying that's a little dramatic. I'm a theater kid. This (laughs) does, however, roll us into chapter 22. (gasps) 22. (laughs) That's that's it. That's it for this episode. One Taylor reference is it. Nah, we can do better than that. Yeah, we'll see. I'm doubting that's going to (laughs) hold. I didn't. Oh, did I make one in the last episode? I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure we did. One creeps up into every episode at least. Yeah, somehow. Even if it's subconsciously, I don't remember it. That night, I dream of my brother Shade coming to visit me in the darkness. He smells like gunpowder. But when I blink, he disappears, and my mind screams what I already know. Shade is dead. (sighs) Why are you so sad all the time, girl? I mean, she's kind of going through a lot right now. Well, yes. Well, Shade is dead. Well, yeah, but like... She's really going through it. Yeah, 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 yeah I get it. Who is not dead? The cheat. <laughs> the cheat is not dead. Deep, deep cut. So glad the cheat is not dead. Okay, you can stop. The cheat is not dead. You can stop. You're good. That's okay. So then Mayor wakes up. And oh, we were going to do just the class. <laughs> not yet. No. So we... Maybe later. Mayor wakes up. And the servants are like bustling around, like cleaning out closets and everything. And she's like, "What? What's what? up? What's up, What's y'all?" What's happening? They're like, "Oh, it's just following orders." And they're just scurrying around. Then she starts trying to get herself dressed, and they stop what they're doing and run over and, of course, do her up all silver. Yeah, she can't just get dressed. She has to get all made up and right. put in a frilly shirt. And she also can't dress herself. Apparently, apparently not. Right, and then Lucas isn't there, so she just is like, "Well, I'll just." She's go like, to protocol. "Yeah, I'll just go to protocol, I guess." Even out. though you know, like the whole ca- palace is falling apart, and you know the servants are basically <laughs> being executed in the garden, but she's like, "I'm going to go to protocol." I'm gonna go protocol. Everything, is Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, it's, Everything it's, is it's fine. like, what planet are you on, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Everything around me is burning, but I'm okay. <laughs> The queen did make it very clear that she was to stay to her schedule. So (laughs) in her defense, she's probably like, "Uh, I better go to protocol or I'm going to die. I feel like maybe there's a little denial, too. She's in a little bit of denial. Oh, I'm sure. Everything is okay. Yeah. If I just keep on doing what I'm doing, then I don't have to acknowledge that any of this is actually happening. Aww. You beautiful little (laughs) tropical fish. Yes. So on her way to protocol, she bumps into... Maven, her betrothed, her soon-to-be husband, her prince. None of this is surprising. (laughs) Why why are you gasping at all those? Do you have temporary amnesia and not remember the other 21 chapters of this book that we've covered? No. I was doing a thing. Uh, I was doing a thing. I gotcha. And Maven's like, I know what you did last night. (gasps) Oh! Yeah, he instantly knows about the camera outages and the guards with the holes in their memories. See? See what I mean? It obviously wasn't that great of a plan, Mare. I mean, it worked, but But instantly instantly everybody knows knows. what happened. I think the biggest thing is the fact that the cameras, there's like the camera blackouts, but nothing else. So there's no way that it's like an issue with the power. Right, and Maven even says it. Maven's like, uh, there were like cameras just to go in. Yeah, out and then back in, and people getting their memories wiped. Like, did you think no one would figure this out, Mayor? <laughs> yeah. And then he kind of has to hint to her that he helped Alara with the questioning and diverted the questioning off of her, basically. Right, he said, I directed her to anyone of suspicion. Yeah. Basically, away from, from me. From you. Yeah, because you clearly did this. Right, and Mare's like, oh, my prince. <sighs> she's she's in uh, she's in a very rare teenage teenager love state where, like, regardless of what this person does, they are perfect. 
regardless of what they do, they're just, they're God to you. I feel like, this is a deep cut, I feel like she looks at him the way you were looking at Robbie in that <laughs> meeting. The one I can't even remember? Yeah, when you were like 19. Oh anyway, we were young. We were very so young. young. I look at funnel cakes that way now. <laughs> <laughs> True. I've seen it. Especially the extra powdered sugar ones. Do we need do you need a minute alone with the funnel cake? We don't have a funnel cake here, or I would. <laughs> but she does find out some interesting information. There was no bomb. Yeah. She asks Maven, so what what'd your mom find out about this bomb? And he's like, Nope. It, no it, bomb. There wasn't a bomb. A bullet punctured a gas line and, and Cal's, fire Cal's fire caused the set explosion. It off. Which I have to say I have a hole in that logic because Cal did his flame hand thing before Mare left the room. So if it was his fire that set it off would it not have just exploded then? Like if there was enough for that for the explosion to be that big? I mean, that depends where I, the leak is. Yeah, also. I don't know where the leak was in relation to where he put, set right. off his, what you call it. I thought to myself that whatever this palace is made out of, like, you know, the outside's made of diamond glass and stuff. It's like the floor wouldn't be made out of something that would deflect a bullet. Like a bullet goes through the floor and hits a gas line. Right. I just thought that was a bit... uh what you call it, a bit strange. I don't know many gas lines that run through floors. They usually go through the wall, but I, I don't know anything about Norda architecture, so I'm not right. sure exactly how all right. of that works. That's a good point. So, But this is the story. Yeah, that's the story. But it's but, not a bomb. Yeah, Alara is not going to change the narrative that it was a bomb because she wants to use it to her advantage and say that the Scarlet Guard planted a bomb at the palace. Yeah. Because then that makes them look even worse. Mm-hmm. And then Reds won't even want to side with them. Yeah. They'll be like, how can they be so careless? But those three that died in the shooting and the eight in the bomb. Yeah. Which equals neither 10 <laughs> nor 12. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out right. there. 11 plus Tristan, we're guessing. <laughs> that's what That's what I'm guessing. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with that? But Mare has this nice little uh, drama pity party laden monologue in her head when she's thinking about, you know, they're getting ready to leave for Archeon. Please tell me you have some of this. Yeah. Go for it. You won't see your family again. Gisa will grow until you don't recognize her anymore. Bree and Tramie will marry, have children, and forget you. Dad will die slowly, suffocated by his wounds, and when he's gone, Mom will slip away, too. And you're ugly, too. (laughs) Dang, Mare. Like, girl. I get you're going through some stuff, but why? Yeah, she's she's worst casing, worst case scenarioing all of this in her head, which I mean, I know how she feels because I can do this as well. But she's just like taking all of it to the absolute worst exactly. degree. No, the H and L. I mean, like, yeah, basically. Like your young, your younger sister will grow, and you won't recognize her. Your brothers will move on and forget you. Your dad will die. Your mom will die right after that. Yep. There's everyone is going to either be dead or want absolutely or nothing to you. do with you. Yeah. So. How was your day? <laughs> right. And then she's like, I, I got to get on this stupid boat and float down this stupid yeah. river. Maybe was like, we're all leaving today. Most of the people have already left or are leaving on airship. But we got to go on the boat. Which is funny because. you can't mess with tradition. Right. And it's the main reason that they're all bailing is early is because they're scared. Yeah, absolutely. They're terrified. But they're going to go roll down the river to try to make it look like they're not terrified. Right. Yeah. And I think it's. It's like, okay, so they've shaken us a little bit. We're going to prove that we're not scared while literally running scared. I want to tell you, I want you guys to tell me where the logic loop is. I, d- I don't think they know what to think at this point in time. Nothing like this has ever happened. 
It's like the time that my grandma told me about it snowing in Arizona and people didn't know what to do with themselves. They just could <laughs> not figure out what to do, whether they should stay home, whether they should leave town. They were just so confused by snow. So, I mean, it's not an exact metaphor, but it's pretty darn close. Yeah. But before they get on the boat, they hear Cal kind of storming around in his room. <sighs> he sounds upset about something. When is Cal not upset about something? We never hear that around this house, do we? No. <laughs> There's never an angry, stomping teenager around here. No. Then there's. Hey. Then he's also. I love you. (laughs) He's wearing armor similar to Ptolemy's. But redder. But redder. More redder. More More redder. redder. I kind of figure that he looks like Deadpool. And (laughs) and maybe. Mare's trying to throw him on attitude. I'm trying to. Hang on. (laughs) I won't go back. I'm trying to. Trying to picture that and it's not working. I'm just teasing. No, it made it made me think of the joke in Deadpool about how the one guy came dressed properly to the fight in brown pants and like red pool or Deadpool's already wearing red. So when people start bleeding he doesn't get doesn't look like he has blood all over him, it's already red. And then he says to the guy, This guy has the right idea by wearing the brown pants. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get it? Yeah. It's funny stuff. Yeah. Kids, you're all too young to see Deadpool. (laughs) Way too young. So she's like, so are you leaving with your Legion? You know, trying to keep things cordial with Cal, even though she wants to scratch his eyes out because, you know, he's... He tortured her butts. Yeah. But he's all mad because his dad won't let him... King Dad won't let him take his <laughs> legion because it's too dangerous now. Daddy won't let me go to war. That's how I imagine him. I just imagine him whining like Pretty a child, much. but about not being able to kill people. Yeah, he's like, you're the heir. We can't afford to lose you, too. He said, but I'm a soldier. I fight, and I can't stand by and not well, fight. But you're the heir. You're supposed to rule. <laughs> Right, but it's your born job. Let's be honest. But you see it from Cal's point of view. He's believes that this legion could actually turn the tide of the war and end everything. He honestly believes that they can do, they end the war. Things will be better for the Reds. Silly boy, <laughs> like like the Aww, war is ever going to end. Honey, honey, honey. Yeah. <laughs> but Maven's like, just find another cause. You know, build another motorcycle. Double your training, you know, run drills with your soldiers. Be swole. Yeah. <laughs> well, he already accomplished that Go to the gym. One. Whatever. He could do a thousand other things, but none of them end up with him dying in an ambush. I think Maven is happy that Cal is not going. I think yeah. deep down inside, he didn't want his brother to have to go and do that. Yeah. And like we mentioned Earlier in the episode, Cal has something in common with Mare. He can't sit still. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's full of anxiety, so he's got to go do something. Yep. But he's pretty much saying that uh, he and Ptolemus, his betrothed brother, kind of have some things in common. Yeah. And they're like, what's that? Yeah, what what are those things? And he says, well, basically, I'm really good at hunting. Ptolemus is really good at killing. Oh, I think I can see where this is going. So we're going to weed these traitors that work for the Scarlet Guard out oh. and rid Archeon of all of them. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Not loving this plan. No. <laughs> Not loving this plan at all. So then there's a small break there in the chapter and we come back and there's a paragraph we want to read. Who is covering that one? Uh, Mom, I think. You have the snippets we want to read there? I do. I used to think the Silvers were untouchable gods who were never threatened, never scared. Now I know the opposite is true. Their strength has become their weakness. Silvers fleeing from reds, lions running from mice. The king and queen oppose each other. The court has their own alliances. And Cal, the perfect prince, the good soldier, is a torturous, terrible enemy. Anyone can betray anyone. Wow. 
Well, here, like we start when we started okay, with the book. I, I want to dissect this real quick. Like, I'm going to let you finish. Okay. But uh, I, <laughs> But I want to dissect this for a second. So the first part there is like, now I see that the silvers can be shaken. They're not just untouchable gods that can't be hurt. But then it goes on to be all like, but Cal betrayed me. Nah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, she's she, first portion. We'll take the first portion. Yeah. She's remember we when we first started doing these podcasts, we were discussing a lot about the way Silvers looked and their appearances through Mare's eyes and how they were godlike and invincible. And then as we go, we see little cracks. Now mm-hmm. she's flat out seen exactly who they are. Yeah. yeah, they're running. They're just like normal people, but they have some abilities. That's literally all they are. Yeah, and without their abilities, they're nothing. Really, exactly. And she's seeing kind of all of this crack and fall apart. Yeah, and it's it's a little satisfying for her. Then she kind of likes it. Right, and then we get the part about her saying, Cal yeah. betrayed me. Yeah. I, I understand her being mad for him torturing them because... Mm-hmm. She wouldn't condone that. But the, he betrayed me. At what point did Cal ever say he was faithful to Scarlet Guard? Never. Never. As a matter of fact, he always had kind of had a negative view of them. And he was the one who said that he thought things were bad for Reds, but the cost isn't worth trying to change. Right. Yeah. What did you expect? He he doesn't think that Red lives are worth the fight. So he's not going to support this. If she were... If she, I mean, if she was considers this a betrayal, she would have had to have actually gone and been like, "Hey, Cal, why don't you help us do this?" Right. Mm-hmm. But she didn't because she knew how he felt. Right. She's Kill letting her. herself, her feelings for him, change his, her opinion of right because his she status into something correct. that it wasn't. Yeah. Because he was sugarcoating the way he felt for a while. And now mm-hmm. he's just outright saying, we're going to go kill a bunch of reds. This is betrayal. Cal betrayed me. Oh, honey. So she's really super bummed and she goes seeking Julian. Because who else would she go to when she's bummed? Exactly. It's always Julian. Right. I mean, if I had a Julian, I would go to him when I'm bummed. Exactly. But Julian's not there. <gasps> what? And his room is empty. And she thinks about all the maps and all the things that he taught her. She gets all sad. She gets all sad. And she wonders that if Norda changes, will all the other countries around them change too? Or will they just see this as a weakness for Norda and all come and attack them? That's that, that's those kind of Cal's reasoning for it not being worth it. Was that if Norda changed, the rest of the countries wouldn't. And Norda would be the odd one out. Yeah. Yeah. And it like they wouldn't let it last. Without their diplomat now it makes it even greater. Right. So before we move on here though, just backtrack just a, just a smidge. If we go back to where right before she wanders around to find Julian there. Cal and Maven are saying their goodbyes to everybody. She's looking off in the distance. There's a bunch of airships because they're taking the boats. She says that she doesn't want to brave the crowd because she doesn't want to see all the grief-stricken faces because of her being part of this, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, pity party mayor. But right. that's where it says, she says, 12 died in the shooting and explosion. And she doesn't want to learn the names of the dead. It will weigh on her. And she wants to have her wits about her. So that's where it says 12 dead. It's literally right before the yeah, part she where she meets Julian, where, she, where she goes to Julian. Yeah, she, she thinks it to herself. So yeah. she's doing the real math plus Tristan. Correct. Yeah. But then she, yeah, then she goes and she sees Julian's room and it's empty. But then he's like, what's up, girl? He likes to sneak up behind Mayor. Kind of creepy. He really does. It is creepy. Yeah. And his room is empty because he's leaving. So, yeah, well, everyone is. I mean, everybody is, yeah. But he's not going with them. No. he's Yeah, she say, he says he's not going to be able to teach her basically because... He's got some position in Delph- Delphi, 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 to restore old documents, which she says even it has in the book saying she she's he's lying to her. Yeah, like that's a lie. That's a lie. 
Lie, lie, yeah. lie, lie, lie. She's like, okay, so are you going to come and visit when you can? He's like, oh, sure. Liar. That's a, a liar. Lie. Basically, what she's getting is he's running because right. they've got to know he had, took a part right. in this. Right, right. Yeah. That's where the blank spots in the memory came exactly. from. But she says she hit, she's, he's gotten her a gift that she will receive when she gets, when she gets to, to the, the capital. Yeah. So. So a little foreshadowing. And then she gives him, she's a big old Julian hug and moves on her way. Ugh, but this part was so sad. She says hugging him is like hugging my father or the brothers I'll never see again. I don't want to let him go, but the danger is too great for him to stay, and we both know it. Yep. Aww. And then Pity I'm, party. I'm gonna read also from uh, this is Julian. Thank you, Mayor, he whispers in my ear. You remind me so much of her. I don't need to ask to know he's talking about Corianne, about the sister he lost so long ago. I'll miss you, little lightning girl. Right now, the nickname doesn't sound so bad. So as we were talking about, right, as we were talking about earlier, I think that's why she's able to convince Julian so easily to help her because he sees his sister when he looks at her. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so now we're on the boats. And we're traveling down the river to Archeon. This could bring about some fun conversation. Yeah, with some muttering. Maven mutters. Mm -hmm, Some muttering. This is where all the flinching comes in, too. Yeah, and he says that the Sentinels were reassigned, which basically means they were sent to the front. Yeah. The war front. Yeah, they'll all be given some, you know, crap group of soldiers to... Be sent, like, right to the front. Yeah, to to captain basically the first ones that go in the trenches are going to be the troops that they'll get so so they'll either die themselves or they'll have to stand there and watch their men die they're basically being punished oh yeah for sure and he says lucas is fine but he's traveling with house samos and basically like the shoot this this whole thing's to have everybody on edge yeah yeah all the silvers are freaking out yeah this is not good. Then he says something interesting. He says, but we'll have answers soon. What? what is that, Maven? What do you what do you mean? What? He said they found red blood from a red in the cells. What? So what does that mean? Well, it's, my first thought was Tristan. Poss- yeah. There is Tristan blood. Because that Tristan would, be would obviously have had There may to be have Farley blood. blood, but there's also Mare, Mare blood. blood. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Farley blood thing. I feel like it it would have been funny if Farley's blood had been down there, and that's what they found. Well, they probably found it all, and would be able to differentiate from whose they are. True. But they have a blood base. They call it. Yeah. There's a database of every every red who's they said who's. Maven says who's born like within a hundred miles of of civilization. Of civilization is yeah. Basically, they take their blood and track them from birth. Yeah. That's. Which was Creepy. designed to be an experiment to see how red blood was different than silver blood, but basically just ended up a, as a way to Another track tracker. them. Yeah, it wasn't keep an eye on them. It was designed to track them. Yeah. The first part was just, yeah, this is this is so we can just make sure and see what you guys are all about. Yeah. Right. But in bigger Why are we cities so different. In bigger cities, they don't even use ID cards. They use blood tags. So you can't fake it. If you're a red, your blood will be scanned and they will know who you yeah. are. Hunger Games. Yeah, he, he, he says it'll, it takes about a week or so and they'll know who did it. So she's like, okay, I've got basically a week to live now. <laughs> so she tells Maven, it's my blood. My blood's down there. It's my belly blood. I got shot in the tummy. <laughs> My tummy blood is down there in the <laughs> yep. cell. Why? I poured my guts out all over Why the cell. Why tummy? Why? Tummy? I mean, that's where she was shot. Well, you put like... In her tum-tum. <laughs> Can you not say stomach? And then... Stomach? Abdomen? Abdomen? <laughs> Abdomen. Abdomen. And then Mare being Mare gets all depressing. Of and course. And basically is like, well, I wish we could have stayed longer. I'd like to die closer to home. <laughs> really sounds like something somebody I know would say, and I'm not going to say out loud who it is, but I think we all know who in this family would say something like that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have liked to have died close to home. It's like right in the middle of somebody's <laughs> birthday party. <too. laughs> That's so true. 
Anyway. So Maven does what any normal person would do. He pulls her close and starts to make out with her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, she's thinking about dying. Now she really wants me to right. kiss her. She's thinking about death. Who is this she, is Ophelia hot. from Hamlet? <sighs> this is the perfect time to start a makeout session. Yep. While on this boat that currently contains my whole family and also a bunch of guards and, you know. All these people all that want to kill you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to make out in front of them. Yeah. So Maven's like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to find a way to fix this. And Mare's like, no, you can't. You can't <laughs> fix this. He said, you're right. <laughs> nice flip flop maven but then he says <laughs> but I can find someone with more power or I can convince someone with more power than me I don't know what that means because he doesn't get to elaborate because Cal walks up <sighs> swole Cal I love swole Cal <laughs> crap with his, with his casual swole stroll so why do you guys think that she couldn't move her limbs when Cal comes up, she talks about how she can't turn around to look at him or anything because she's basically frozen. Like, is that a Lara from where she's at? I didn't understand that part. I Is she frozen with fear? Or or is it because the kiss she had with Maven was so hot? I just I think she's frozen. I'm gonna go for option one or two. <laughs> no, I think it has to do with she's like, oh no, we just got busted kissing. And I just made out, I also... I gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I think she's yeah. showing her true. As much as Maven does stuff for her, she burns for Cal. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Yeah. But Cal's like, Alara wants to see you. We're getting ready to pass the stilts. Aww. Here's... Get your flinch another, counter ready. Yeah, another mayor pity party. Like, thanks, jerk. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch as we go by my home and right? leave. You want me to? You want me to watch my life slip away? Really? This is, this is what you're doing. You're doing this to me now. Sorry, I got a little angry. Then- Maven tells her that Cal doesn't like to lose, and that neither does he, and that uh, he won't lose her. And <sighs> Mare's like, you're right, you'll never lose me. And she knows that that's just another lie. Yeah. Like, everything being said here right now is all just platitudes. Yep. Yep. So they float past her house. They can't see anybody outside, but she can see the flag that is on their front porch. And it's got three red stars embroidered on it. And one has a black line through it, which is what happens when... You have a soldier in your family that dies. Mm -hmm. Well, they had one that was executed, and that means you're supposed to remove the star from the flag. But they did not, kind of like their own little rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. They left it up there and put the black line through it. it. Giving him the respect that he rightfully deserves. Yeah. So good job, Barrows. Yeah. And Mare's like thinking to herself, why are you guys all up here on the viewing deck? Only fools would stop everything to come and watch you. You know, only fools would waste a moment on this. And then all of a sudden into view comes the shoreline with basically every member of the stilts lined up, some even out into like knee deep into the river. They're all standing together watching the boat go by. But they don't look happy. No. No. I mean, no. Why would they be? Fading hair and worn clothes, blotchy skinned, tired, hungry, all the things I used to be, and angry. <laughs> like the like the little flavor you added there. So she yeah. <laughs> so she asks Alara, what is this that's going on? And Alara is like, well, we couldn't go down the river and not have anybody to come and watch. So, basically, they just made it mandatory. I like how she says it, though. She says, such a waste, parading down the river with no one to watch. It seems we fixed that. Right, and, like, and oh. Mayor can hear, like, whip cracks coming from the shoreline, where Here they're basically the keep them in line. And then she asks Laura, why, why are you doing this? And it's Cal that kind of answers this time. And he's basically like, these, are, these people know what happened. They know about the shooting and the explosion. And some of them might even agree with what's going on. We have to show them that we're not 
Yeah. Beaten. Yeah. Yeah. We're not even bleeding. It's all back to power and strength. Yeah. It's all about the show. Sorry, I just I'm 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 like I'm, I, the yeah. urge to punch is very strong. But then she time. then she asked Cal if he ordered them to be beaten too, and he just he can't even answer her, and he can't even keep looking. He has to close his eyes because he, even he can't watch it. Yeah, like this is hard for him. And then the king has to give his two cents. Tybe, I call him Tybe. We're tight like that. No, uh, <laughs> he's basically like this is the Red Village. They feed and harbor and protect, and even may become members so they must learn yeah and he tells her your time to speak will come so she realizes that that's exactly what they're keeping her around for is times when this balance as they call it which is basically just the reds with their foot on the throat or the silvers with their foot on the throat of reds that when anything threatens to topple that to where the Reds might actually get up and fight for themselves. That's what they have Mare for. So she can come on and say things like, no, don't be mad. You know, it's all going to be okay. She realizes that that's the plan that they have for her. I I just want to express how difficult this was for me to read. Every single time. Every time I've read it. It's just hard. Oh, this yeah. river scene? Yeah. Oh, Why? Yeah. It's just because of everything. Like, it's so emotional and some, and like, what, you know, the king says and what Alara says. It's just all of it. Right. Because the king says they have to learn. And Mare's like basically like opening her mouth to have another, you know, comment. And Alara Don't. cuts her off basically and says, Perhaps you know of a few who should you made an example of. Clearly stating. Keep your mouth shut or we'll find the ones you care about there. Yeah. And we yeah. know who they are mm-hmm. and we'll punish them. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's her low-key way of saying, nah, nah, nah. shut up. Shut up. Yeah. Just think about how good so far in the 20, first 22 chapters of what we've seen of Alara, how good she is. I mean, I hate using the word good in this context, but how good she is at manipulating people through fear and things like that without using her abilities. Yeah. <laughs> and then think about what she can do with them. It's just right. it's yeah. scary. Very scary. Like she's she's so again, I don't want to say good, but she's so good with words. Like she has a way with words. Oh yeah, for sure. It's uh it's, it's a little unsettling, really. Yeah. So the houses start getting bigger. And they start having flags on them with colors that Mare recognizes. And she throws herself a little bit of a compliment, which we never see, so good on Mare. Right. She says, I recognize the colors of the houses, and I've even killed the owners of a few. Woo! hey <laughs> I, I like this. Mare She's getting a little energy. I kind of like it. A little bit. Maven explains that these are like the country estates for the lords and ladies. When they need to get away from the city, they can come here. But that no one will leave the city right now. They're all in groups together because they're too afraid of the guard. And Mare says, if only no one had to fight at all. And Maven <sighs> says, it does no good to dream. Like, yeah, Maven. He yeah. is not here for that. Maven. Reality check, girl. Yeah. Maven's like, yeah, anyway. Too late for all of that talk, 17-year-old. <laughs> then they, By the way, what are these strange-looking trees? Yeah, these giant trees. It's the... Uh, they were made to keep the pollution from going upriver to the silvers. Yeah. Hmm. What's on the other side of this pollution barrier? The most depressing place in the history of the world. Yeah. Yes. Basically. G- Gray town. Gray town. Yeah. You can't see the sky because mm-hmm. it's so full of smoke yep. from all the factories. Mm-hmm. This is where all the techies live. Yep. Right. So they make the lights, the video screens, all of that all stuff. All of the technology. Yeah. Basically worst human condition. Just transports clogging the roads with cargo. <sighs> Basically, there's no one there lining the shores because they don't need to have the Greytown because Greytown's already so yeah. crushed and beaten down. 
Yeah, Mare says they're broken from birth. Right. Yeah, they don't need to be shown this. They don't need to be broken anymore. They already are. Right, and Maven said. Maven even says most techies never leave their own alley. They can't even conscript. Like it would be better to go to the front than yeah. what they have, and they can't even do that. War would be a better alternative. Yeah. Than what they're living in. In addition to all the tech stuff, they also make the guns, the bullets, the bombs, the ships, the transports. They keep the power running. They keep the water clean. So basically, they do everything for silvers, and the only way that they're rewarded is with smoke and ash. Right. Yeah. And, and Mary even feels starts to feel weird because she could feel literally all, all the, the electricity. electricity. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get past Greytown, and we see Archeon, and there's... <gasps> There's a couple of paragraphs that really brilliantly <laughs> describe the, the describe the size and the, the diamond glass and the guards and how it's built like a fortress and everything. But basically, Mayor said when Mayor's discussing it, she says she doesn't see it as beautiful now at all. It's just a symbol of everything she stands for. After seeing Greytown, that just kind of like pushed her over the edge. Yeah. Yeah, after Greytown, she's had it. Yeah, she I, that kind of broke her. She's like, nah, this is, no. I'm done. This isn't beautiful. This isn't great. I'm not going to marvel at this because of what I just saw. Yeah. Like, it's not even that far down the river. Yeah, she says, this is the world I'm trying to bring down. The world trying to kill me and everything I care about. Now I truly see what I'm fighting against, how difficult, how impossible it will be to win. But I have to try, if only for Greytown, for the ones who have never seen the sun. So she has new inspiration to keep the fight going. Yes. Yeah. And she wants to win for the people of Greytown. Yes. She also does kind of realize it's daunting because when she comes in, she realizes, she even discusses that Archeon is really built for war. It's built yeah. to defend against an all-out assault. Yeah, it's, it's a, fortress. a fortress. Yeah. The guards are not regular guards. They are soldiers. They mm-hmm. are yep. trained fighters. Yeah. And they will shoot on sight. Yeah. So, have fun. Yep, so starting next week, we get to see Mare in Archeon. Yeah, exploring the wonder, I don't, I guess, that is Whitefire Palace. Yep, y'all mm-hmm. ready for this? And the, I guess, as far as we know, so far, leader of the Scarlet Guard that we've seen, Farley, is still at large now. Yep. That makes you very happy, Dad. Well, of course it? it does. Yeah. Farley running around in the wild somewhere with Kalorn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Walsh. Yeah. She's there no too. No Tristan. Um, really? You didn't like him in the first place. <laughs> he did. He was a bit of a jerk, but... I don't think he deserved to get skewered no. by Ptolemus. Yeah, definitely not. Shish kebab is not the way he deserved to go. By Toiletmus. Really? <laughs> are you Are you a kindergartner? No. <laughs> no, he's thinking of Gladiator. Toiletress? Yeah. Gladiator, the king's son's name was Commodus, but we kept calling him Commodus, which translates to Eventually we started calling him to- Toiletress. <laughs> it's a great movie. I really like it. Joaquin Phoenix did a great job in that movie, he in did. that part, but he was crazy. It was a good movie. Just The anyway, names are funny. Anyway. Gluteus Maximus and uh, Toiletress. Guys. <laughs> His name was Maximus. Guys, can can we get back on track, please? Okay. I never I mean, thought I I'd be the one saying, let's get back on track. I like, guess. Here we go. I was going to launch into a story about being pregnant with your brother, but that's fine. <laughs> Now's not the time. Does it apply to the book? No, it applies to Gladiator. Oh, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> We've got fan art corner anyway. Yeah. Got that to attend to. Let me show you guys this week's fan art. Okay. This week's artist, I believe, is one of our bilingual artists. The uh, handle on Instagram is at eduarda.nr. So that's E-D-U-A-R-D-A dot N dot R on Instagram. And this is their art this week. 
Ooh. Oh, I like that. Wow. It's a good mare. Yeah. That's an amazing mare. I love the hair. So you can check that out on our Instagram. I will put Eduarda in ours artwork on our Instagram. It'll be on our YouTube videos of the show. And it will also be on the fan art section of our website. And that made me realize that I always forget to talk about our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We have video versions of all of our episodes uploaded. The YouTube channels, just like our name, Reading with the Rockefellers. Mia does a great job of putting together our videos every week. And so uh, the fan art will be there. We will give Eduarda and R all of their uh, artists, full artist credits. Mm -hmm. um, also, like I said, you can go over to the fan art page. That's at our website, www.readingwiththerockefellers.com. Um, there you can see the fan art. Like I said, uh, you can download all versions of our all episodes of the show. They're all there for you. You can see all of our beautiful faces, read our blog posts. Um, eventually, I've been told I need to put some pictures of Meredith and Olivia, <laughs> our mascot rats up on the website. We don't have any Mare and Olivia representation on the website yet. Meredith, not Mare Barrow, our rat Meredith, we call her Mare. Also, it gets kind of confusing. A little bit. Uh, you can I think check she out. Thinks we're talking about her sometimes. I'm when sure we she record. does. Yeah, she's over there like, what? What? <laughs> can I have a treat now? Not, no. She loves her treats. She does. She also loves to bite fingers. Yeah. Um, you can check us out on Instagram. It's at Reading with the Rockefellers. Occasionally, we pop up on Twitter at Rockefeller Read. Or if you've got fan art that you want to submit, uh, any ideas for your dream casting, mm -hmm. we are hard coming up on our the end of this book, and we'll be doing our fan casting for the show, our dream cast episode when we finish the book. Mm -hmm. So uh, send us all of your ideas for the fan casting. Send us your fan art. That email address is readingwiththerockefellers at gmail.com. And I think that's it. You guys have anything else this week? No. No, I'm good. All right. Well, we will see everybody next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.